what is Sharia law and is it a problem? Now, a lot of people that are defending the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, most of them are actually radical liberals, interestingly enough. Um, and a lot of radical liberals have uh, promoted this idea that Sharia law is a secular, basically Sharia law is what Muslims practice on a personal level and it's about their relationship with God and their, uh, their obedience to submit to God's law. This is half true, but a half truth is a lie when you're omitting the other half. Sharia law in its most, um, act in its most accurate statement, Sharia law in its original statement, Sharia law is an interpretation of Islamic law by the leader of an Islamic country used to govern the people of an Islamic country. It's not much different than Talmudic law or the biblical laws in the Old Testament. And I've made a previous video very recently about this, about how Christianity is not very different than Islam in its, uh, or at least it didn't used to be very different. Under the Catholic Church and the Dark Ages, uh, there was very little difference between how the Catholic Church ran a country and how Sharia law runs uh, extremist countries today. But you will see in the description there are a number of countries that do follow Islamic law. Now it is true that for the most part uh, Sharia law is obeyed in a mixed system, meaning there's both a secular system of justice and the Sharia system of justice that are merged together. What worries me is that BBC and other similar news agencies are more concerned about how Sharia law will affect the homosexuals and women of Afghanistan and not concerned about how Sharia law will affect the people of Great Britain. Okay, and the same goes for the United States. We have a Sharia court in Texas. People don't understand that. We have a Sharia court in Texas that has rulings via Sharia law. Um, there are many areas of both the United States and Great, Great Britain that I don't know, I wouldn't say that the ones in the United States are no-go areas, but I wouldn't go to them. Uh, it's kind of like, it was funny, when I was planning my trip to Argentina, obviously I went to the CIA, CIA.gov, and the State Department to find out everything I could on Argentina. And it, it warns tourists to stay away from shanty towns. Okay, a shanty town is a town where the, the buildings are, you know, plywood shacks made of, you know, cloth and uh, wood. I don't know why you would have to be told to avoid a place like that, but apparently the Central Intelligence Agency and the State Department feels that, yes, they do need to tell Americans, please avoid shanty towns. Uh, if you've ever seen an Islamic community in the United States, and I'm not talking, and this is the thing that people confuse. I'm not talking about when doctors move, let's see, this is the thing, and I'll get into this in a second, but when you see an Islamic community in the United States, it's not, uh, it, it's not exactly like you don't know you're in an Islamic community. I'll just put it that way. Uh, you will see more or less third world living standards. And people will go, well, that's because of, uh, you know, mistreatment at the hands of the secular United States. No, it's not. This is how these people prefer to live. They still have water, energy, etc. But the way they live is not the same as how a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant may. That's just, that's how it is with pretty much every minority in the United States. Um... And actually what was funny is when I went out to Arizona, prior to going to Indian reservations, like I, I, I actually lived on an Indian reservation for about four of the six months I lived in Arizona. I was 
on an Apache reservation. I was hanging out with some Apache chick. And uh, yeah, honestly, the situation is not that these people are not taken care of or given the proper resources by the federal government. The problem is that they prefer to live, and this is, I'm not talking about the Islamists, I'm talking about Native Americans, at least from what I saw from a number of Apache reservations. They prefer to live an alcoholic, womanizing existence. That's, that's their preference. They don't want to assimilate into uh, the rest of American culture or civilized American culture. And the they, government gives them the educations, gives them the ability to make money through uh, tax-exempt gaming rights and things of that nature. They get to sell cigarettes to the whites at, uh, at no taxation, so everybody's buying cigarettes on the reservations, except for the reservations that are con uh, conscious and have outlawed the sale of alcohol or tobacco products on the reservation. Some reservations do take, do care about their people's well-being in that sense. So um, it's not necessarily across the board, but this desire by the individual uh, Native American, it seems to me, is that they prefer to live that way, as opposed to that they lack the resources uh, or that the federal government is not providing them these resources. Uh, the question I have is, why doesn't the federal government provide these resources to all Americans? Keep in mind, Native Americans are not technically U.S. citizens. They are citizens of the Confederated Tribes of North America, not United States citizens. That's why they have tax-exempt status. Now, getting back into uh, Sharia law. Uh, Sharia law is uh, very harsh, generally speaking. It's not always. So you have to understand that different countries have different interpretations of Sharia law based upon the leaders of those countries. Iran's Sharia law is different than Pakistan's Sharia law. Okay. However, what you will see in the United States, for example, there was an Iraqi man that murdered his, uh, his daughter. And it's actually very sad because the daughter was absolutely gorgeous. I'll try to find a link to that news story and leave it in the description. But he had killed her because she had wanted to date um, an American boy. And he killed her via an honor killing, ran her over. And luckily he did get punishment in an Arizona court. Uh, and there's other instances. Um, it was like a 7-Eleven owner that murdered his two daughters uh, because they were dating Western boys. And uh, this is when people say that Sharia law is something that is followed on a personal level. That's what they mean. <laughs> Just to let you know, that's what they mean. On a state level, it's a little different, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, if you want to see people getting their heads chopped off, Sharia law is something you may wish to embrace in this country. I personally am against capital punishment, and I don't believe that Sharia law should be practiced in the United States of America or any Western country, but being that I am a United States citizen, I'm of course concerned about my country. Okay. So you have to keep that in mind. You also have an influx of Latin Americans, uh, many of whom are converting to Islam. Uh, these are fervently religious people, the Latin Americans. So you may see them starting to embrace uh, Sharia law and other Islamic uh, concepts of, of justice and uh, concepts of life. And you may see a lot of the Latin American communities in the United States be irreparably um, damaged by this mass conversion to, well not really mass, but you have a lot of Latinos converting to Islam. You also have a lot converting to Mormonism, a lot converting to Seventh-day Adventism, a lot converting to uh, the Mennonite religion, etc. But you do have a lot of them converting to Islam too. And these are fervent, as I said, these are fervently religious, God-fearing people. And uh, you have to remember, uh, they will express their religiosity uh, as they as they choose to, and it doesn't seem like there's any uh, legal. Uh, the law doesn't want to get in the way 
of them expressing their religious fervor. Uh, the one link is to an interview with a gentleman that supports Sharia law and a woman that supports the Taliban, a purple-haired woman or pink-haired woman that supports the Taliban. And what my warning is to these radical leftist feminists, uh, if you think that, I mean, communism is one thing. This bullshit wouldn't have been tolerated under a truly communist government either, Okay. The USSR, Cuba, etc., they're not going to tolerate people running around with pink hair uh, stating, oh, you know, blah, 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 the media is evil, the country is evil, etc. That's not going to be tolerated in a communist country. Uh, Sharia law is not going to tolerate a woman not being completely covered a lot of times. Uh, they're certainly not going to uh, encourage a woman to be shouting down the, the state, the, the Sharia state, okay? So if you care about your alleged feminism or your, your, brown, your black and brown sisters that live in these African and Middle Eastern countries that adhere to Sharia law, because uh, you claim to, that's what the whole gist of feminism is, we care about women and women, blah, 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 blah. Well, your black and brown sisters that live under Sharia uh, are going to, uh, are being treated the, the way that you perceive that white Anglo-Saxon Protestant men are treating women. Uh, it's not uh, anywhere near as bad like white Anglo-Saxon Protestant men uh, saying this or that is not anywhere near as bad as what Sharia law has. And if you don't believe me, look into the topic of Sharia law. Another concern I have regarding Sharia law is actually Talmudic law. Uh, the Talmud, uh, you have another group of people in this country, and I'll leave a link to the survivor of a, a cult. You have another group of people in this country who shall remain nameless, uh, but they obey the Babylonian Talmud. And uh, as I stated, the laws of the, the, the Sharia law and the laws of the Torah and the Talmud aren't very different. There's not a lot of difference in how they're applied, etc. But with this other group of people, uh, they've been allowed to commingle with white Anglo-Saxon Protestants and others in the United States. Uh, now, they choose not to assimilate. They're, they're absolutely, this group, this other group, chooses not to assimilate, as do the Muslims. The Muslims choose not to assimilate a lot of times, too. But this other particular group very much chooses not to assimilate. In fact, they have a, a holiday called Hanukkah that uh, is actually dedicated to not assimilating and uh, murdering the, uh, the indigenous people of a region uh, called Damascus uh, because they refuse to assimilate. Uh, and it's a, a celebration of murder and uh, anti-assimilation. And people like to say, well, what's wrong with the United States? There, there is no... Uh, U.S. culture anymore due to the lack of forced assimilation. Uh, when my mother's family came here from Brazil, they had to learn English. They had to assimilate. Uh, my father's family, of course, came from primarily uh, England and Ireland and, you know, Great Britain. So, I mean, there wasn't much assimilation, and prior to the United States being a country, so there wasn't a lot of assimilation going on there. They were the founding stock of the country. Uh, same thing with my mother's family from Ireland. When my mother's uh, family from Ireland came here, they were expected to assimilate. Um, when Poles were, came here, they were expected to assimilate. When Germans came here, they were expected to assimilate. Uh, when other people have come here, they have been expected to assimilate. It's only since the late 1990s, mid-1990s, late 1990s that we're okay with allowing people to not assimilate into U.S. culture and thinking that everything's going to be hunky-dory. 
and that there's going to be no problems. Well, that's not the case because there is no unified opinion of what it means to be an American anymore. There is no unified American vision, a vision of what Americanism actually is. It does not exist anymore in this country because of the lack of forced assimilation of foreigners that come in here. The other thing that worries me quite a bit is we have no idea who is coming in, period. We don't know. We pretend like we do, but we thought we knew when we brought in other massive groups of Bosnians and other people like that. We did not know. We were attacked at later dates by these people. Uh, and that's a, a big problem. And uh, like when people ask me, do I support... Uh, like one of the reasons I voted for Donald Trump was the so-called Muslim ban, or Muslim ban, and it's not because I'm against Muslims. It's because if we don't know the intentions of the people coming in here, and the fact that even if they don't have these intentions when they come here, but could be radicalized, remember the Pulse nightclub shooting. That gentleman was most likely radicalized after the point that he came to the United States. So that's another thing is the mosques and things of that nature that are all around this country. Uh, radicaliz radicalization can take place at these religious institutions. Uh, it, it does at Christian and other institutions. Uh, who remembers the, uh, I used to think it was great, um, oh my God. Uh, the God Hates Gays guy. He used to crack me the hell up. Um, I forget the name of the church. If I can remember it, I'll put a link in the description. But radicalization happens in Christian churches. You think it's not happening in, in Islamic mosques? There's radicalization taking place in Christian churches today. Okay? There's definitely radicalization taking place in mosques in the United States. And that's a problem because even if we're bringing these folks in here and they don't have uh, ill intentions, what about their children? Or what about them 10 years later after receiving radicalization at one of the many mosques in the United States? Do you think they're still not going to have ill intentions? The other thing is we don't know their intentions in the first place bringing them there. That's another important factor. Uh, do follow the links in the description, check out the links, read the links, understand the links, understand that this is not made up. The, this is a legitimate threat to the United States. Um, I really do uh, think that the, the government, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm going to put some Tulsi Gabbard links in the description too. She's on active duty right now, but she's made a couple of quick videos about the situation. And people should watch those videos uh, and understand those videos. And I'm also going to leave a link to Tulsi Gabbard's channel. I really wish more people would understand that it's imperative that our leadership understands the threat that radical Islam is to the Western world. It's a much greater threat to the Western world than communism ever was. And that's all for this video.